Cruise news time, and I have an update on the assault on the Carnival Magic. I also have an update on the missing crew member on the Aida Perla. And we have to talk about this story about people who made what I felt was the craziest cruise decision, selling off their possessions and even their homes to go on a three-year cruise. Well, that three-year cruise has hit another snafu. Wait till you hear why this cruise can't happen on its scheduled date. Uh, plus, I got more stuff. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lida Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. Yes, for your face on Tuesday, October the 24th, 2023. And I just flew back in from Nashville and boy, are my arms tired. I did it. I saw Kiss in Nashville, their 24th appearance in Nashville. Uh, they're claiming it's going to be the last appearance. I believe them. They did a farewell tour back in 2000, but they were just like my age. They were 50 years old. Of course, I'm not ready to quit. Uh, but maybe at 70, I would be ready to quit. So I really don't think these guys are going to tour again. Fantastic show. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the show. But first, I want to talk about some cruise news. Cruise news story number one. I told you a few days ago about the assault that happened on the Carnival Magic. I told you that some of the details were a little sketchy, that we hadn't seen anything official. Now that that ship has returned to Norfolk, some of the details are becoming more clear. Apparently, first and foremost, the person that did the attacking was held in their cabin until the ship finished their crews, and then that person was turned over to authorities, also receiving a lifetime ban from Carnival. The actual incident appears to be some sort of broken glass stabbing. Originally, I'd heard that a glass was broken over someone's head, but apparently the, the glass was broken and maybe used as a, a, a puncture weapon, stabbing. I brought the story up the other day for this reason, and I'll mention it again here. It's just a reminder that when you go on cruise ships, you are, you know, locked in with a whole community of people, many of them that you don't know. I would say most of them that you don't know, and you don't know how they're going to react under stress and under pressure. And so I would just say be cautious if you're going to confront somebody on a cruise ship. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, there's still, you know, plenty of people in the comments out there that said they're they're ready to go. They're ready to uh, drop hands. If the, Is that the phrase, the turn of phrase? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, be careful out there. That's what I'm trying to say. Cruise news story update number two. Sad ending to the story about the crew member who went overboard on the Aida Perla. They called the search off. They were unable to recover the crew member that went overboard after an extensive search, not only by the cruise ship itself, but also by authorities there from the UK. The crew member certainly somebody's family member out there, and so... Uh, now we've got this family having to deal with the tragedy. Cruise News Story number three also deals with a developing, very sad situation. Off the coast of Germany, two cargo ships have collided with each other. One is called the Verity, and the other one is called the Polisi, and the Verity sank. The Verity sank. They have one confirmed fatality there, but they have some missing sailors off of that vessel and a cruise ship was asked and has been actively helping in the search and rescue mission. A lot of challenging stories coming off of PNO Iona as guests described the search and rescue mission. Crew members shining huge floodlights into the water in the nighttime trying to search for any survivors of this collision, any survivors from the Verity. Again, tough and unfortunate stuff. Hope for the best outcome in that situation. Now, I got to tell you about what I feel like is probably one of the most crazy things to do when booking a cruise. Spoiler, selling your apartment or selling your house. But before I do that, let's swing back around and talk about the three cruise ports from the last episode. Shout out to Nuresk, who correctly identified the three cruise ports. Key West, Florida, Bimini in the Bahamas, and Oslo, Norway. The, the Vigland Garden sculpture was the giveaway there. There'll be three more cruise ports at the end of the show. If you'd like to get your guests in and get some recognition, make sure you stay until the end. And now just a quick programming note. Do you know what night it is? You might be saying, well, it's just it's Tuesday night. Tony, no, it's not. It's Cruise Day Night Live. That's right. Cruise Day Night Live, 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, right here on this very YouTube channel. You can join myself and the lovely Jenny B as we chop it up and talk about cruising. I got to talk. I feel like Don, my friend Don Terrace from Don's Family Vacation and his commentary channel, Just Don. I feel like he 
put a little drama in the mix. I, like my name and Jenny's name was in his mouth, and I think he put a little cruise drama out there. So I want to address that in the live show tonight. So we're going to have a little drama sesh about Don Terrace. And and uh, if you want a whole show that's exclusive to you, there's always like over a thousand people in the main show. So sometimes you can't you know answer all the comments. But there is another show that happens before that where everybody's comments get addressed, and that's the Patreon exclusive live show that happens every time that we do the other show, there's an exclusive show. And it only costs $5 a month to get access to the exclusive show. So for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, that place should be called five bucks. So for less than this, you can get a whole month's worth of exclusive live streams. Uh, the link will be in the pinned comment or at the very top of the description. It's patreon.com forward slash Lita Loca. We would love to see you there tonight. And well, with all that shameless self-promotion, out of the way, I I won't do the whole normal call to action where I invite you to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell. I won't do that part of it. I'll just do the part that everybody's waiting for. You ready? Carousing. So yeah, no call to action today. But if I was doing a call, to, I would say subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you in advance. Here's the deal. Earlier this year, there was a new cruise announced, a three-year around-the-world cruise. And this round-the-world cruise was offered by a company called Life at Sea. And the goal was that you would spend three years on a Marais cruise ship, the MV Gemini, and uh, life would be beautiful. And this thing sold pretty quick when it was announced earlier in the year. And you even had people selling their apartment and selling their homes so that they could spend three years on a cruise ship. The only challenge and the thing that makes it crazy is that Life at Sea does not own a cruise ship. But when this thing was first announced, the fact that a cruise ship was not owned wasn't a big deal. There were talks about acquiring a cruise ship and that would make this whole cruise for three years happen. But that was back in the first quarter of this year. But here we are, October the 24th, 2023. The cruise was set to start on November the 1st. And well, guess what? The three-year cruise has been delayed do you want to know why? Because October 31st, that is my date of birth. I got to the party. No, I did the smur. Shout out, Ludacris. No, do you want to know why? Well, but they, they, still, they still don't have a cruise ship. That's right. But, but wait, it's okay. They say that the finalization of the cruise ship is in the mix. And now the cruise will start on November the 11th. Could you imagine if you spent $100,000 on this thing, sold your house, you're living with your grandma and like in her second bedroom, sleeping on a twin bed because you sold all your stuff, waiting to go on this cruise and they keep going, it's going to be an awesome cruise. Just gotta get a ship. Look, I've said it. I don't like going on inaugurals because sometimes they don't have the props for the ice skating show, but at least they got the ship. Look, I love cruising probably more than anybody, but I'm filing the, should I sell my house and book a cruise on a ship that doesn't exist? I'm filing that under things I don't think anybody should ever do. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Now, let's have our little moment of gratitude. Clear your mind. Clear your mind and what's the first thing that pops into your head that you're thankful about? I know many of you said pizza. What are you thinking about that you are grateful for? And let me tell you what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for the carnival celebration. We are less than a week from our last Halloween group cruise. And the thing that makes that Halloween group cruise possible, doesn't matter who's there, all the plans, that kind of thing, that cruise would not be possible if it wasn't for a cruise ship. I. I I can't believe you book a cruise with no cruise. Uh, so I am grateful for the existence of the Carnival Celebration for our group cruise. And uh, all joking aside, there's a lot to be grateful for. I had a wonderful time with my brother, my big brother, Chris, in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm always thankful for that dude. And you know what else I'm thankful for? I'm also thankful for the rock group KISS. Mad respect for anybody that gets out there and does their thing for 50 years. Really amazing concert last night, over 20 songs, the technology, the pyrotechnics off the chain. I don't think I've ever seen screens that big and that high def. 
and they worked it all out together. The finale was amazing. There was one point toward the end where they dropped these huge balloons on the crowd and then they showered the crowd with confetti and streamers and it was really like a big celebration to the last performance there in Nashville, which it's the same celebration they're doing at each show, but um, yeah, much respect for these guys doing it for 50 years. There's certainly a lot of Kiss songs that are part of the soundtrack of my life. Uh, I love it loud, probably one of them if you've ever listened to the show. I don't think that would be a shocker. I love it loud. What are you grateful for? Leave it in the comments if you like. Thanks for watching the show. Now it's your turn to identify three cruise ports. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Live shows tonight. Bye.